G'day everyone, welcome to another video by myself, Andrew DFT. And of course, in today's video, you can tell that this is part two of the how to build a Fortnite Scar. So of course, when we left off in part one, we had a lot of this already built, but of course, we need to go off now and finish it, add in all the final touches, and make sure that we do get it sealed and painted up nicely. Now, of course, I'm not gonna do a full-on comprehensive painting study on this one. I will just do a basic, hey, this is what I did, and you guys can go off and check some other resources. There's an amazing array of painting tutorials out there, as well as eBooks and just so much content, which is far more intricate than what I would teach you here because painting is not my main skill. Making the initial gun, that is my primary focus. And of course, the primary focus in teaching you here. Otherwise, let's jump into part two. And of course, if you're new here, please consider subscribing if you enjoy the content because there'll be plenty of more cool things on the way to come. Let's go. All right, so when we left off, we were of course building up extra layers to give it a nice 3D chunky form. We'll continue doing that by applying in a vertical line here, of course segmenting out the back section of the gun to allow that detail to really come through and of course allow the paint job to look a bit different. Once that vertical line is placed in, we can use the technique of scoring to break the surface of the foam to of course allow that nice heat form treatment to appear in the end. We can then break the template further and give it the perimeter lines and then the depth line three quarters of the way through that thickness. We can then do the same about halfway through the foam up on the top and the bottom of the final butt piece area. Once you've got those all marked out, we can go with a nice sharp craft blade and take it to the foam and bevel out those sections to make sure they're nice, clean and crisp. Remember, always switch out your blade if it's not cutting properly and then glue it into position. Next, we're gonna actually work on the magazine section. So we're gonna go ahead and grab the template and we're gonna make it into three sections of the foam. Remember to flip the template on at least one of them so that we have a left and the right and it's gonna be three foam sheets thick. What we're gonna do before we glue all this together is we're gonna get the templates and cut out the interior segments, of course, where these details are, and we're gonna cut it out on the left and the right one. You can leave the center one as it is, but on the left and the right, you're gonna cut it completely free on both those two strips. You're then gonna apply a depth line about three quarters of the way through the foam and then cut off the textured piece. You can then put the pieces back into those sections we of course excavated it from, and then we can go ahead and glue all of this together so it sits there nice and flush with the remainder of the piece, and of course giving us the actual mag that it's supposed to look like. To finish off the little piece of detail, we'll just add in the bottom here a horizontal line which of course marks it off, and we'll throw in that technique of scoring to finish it off and then we'll go ahead and just glue it straight in to the middle of course where it should actually sit. You don't have to mark it out if you don't need to, but you should see it should fit perfectly in there with the three original pieces of the main body. So you just have to line that up and it shouldn't have any problem. Now we're gonna take the measurement here of 16.5 inches. Remember that number, well you don't have to, I've written it down, that 16.5 inches is gonna be the length we're gonna build for the rail on top. Now we're gonna also take the measurement here. On mine, it's a one inch. I don't know what it is on yours, it all depends on where you've cut it, but if it's one inch, that's perfect. What we're then gonna do is remember the 16.5, the one inch, and we're then gonna draw a long strip, which will be the rail, at a width of 1.2 inches, just a bit thicker than, of course, the one inch. This is gonna be our rail and overhang. So what we'll do is once we've cut that section free, we're of course gonna make it uh, width at one inch so you can bring it in should be like 0.1 on each side and then you're going to add a depth line three quarters of the way through the foam towards the non-textured side here we're going to go ahead with a 90 degree cut straight down and then of course in on that horizontal angle to cut that section away free so again the width of the entire part is 1.2 and then the part that we've cut with the 90 degree bevel is one inch so that way it sits flush up there on the top Hopefully that makes sense. Now we can move on to actually adding in all the individual rail segments that sit up on top. This part is gonna take a while, but you should just go through using the template as a guide and you're gonna mark out a whole bunch of rectangles. Obviously the width of this uh, should sit at the 1.2 inch thick. If it doesn't, you can of course just go ahead and mark it out and excavate the line. Of course, mine here was accidentally sitting about 1.3, so I had to quickly take it back by a 0.1 of an inch just to make sure when we cut it all free, it sits flush. Then what you're gonna do is add a width line just a bit further in, so that way we can give these the nice bevel incline that of course a rail on a gun does have. And you do that by simply beveling it off before you cut all the individual segments free. But then you can of course do that, cut them all free, and go ahead and start gluing them on all individually. 
Now you will notice right at the back on the right hand side I have a larger chunk. This is of course marked out in the template so as long as you get that extra length on that, that should be fine. That's just where we're going to have the iron sight sitting and uh, helps break apart the design and look of course more towards the final design we're trying to achieve. Now we've got a final piece of detail we need to add. Go ahead with the paper template and cut these free using a craft knife. Lay that paper template onto the foam and then transfer them where they should sit using the uh, straight edge to go back and make them of course straight so they're not wobbly. And then gonna go ahead with the craft plate and actually score these. We don't need to add detail, we don't need to add extra things. You can if you want, um, it's up to you. But otherwise just go ahead and score them. Now the other piece we need to add is of course the trigger guard. This is simple, grab the template, apply it onto foam, cut the texture side off the foam with the left and the right and then just glue those two pieces together and chuck it in there really no uh, explanation needed. Now for the barrel, I'm personally using a wooden dowel. You can use a PVC pipe or a conduit, whatever you prefer. I'm just simply going with a wooden dowel. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna of course mark out the perimeter of how thick this is. And I'm simply gonna carve a 1.5 inch deep hole into the foam and then fill it with hot glue, whatever your gluing agent is and then simply slide that pole in, leave it to dry, and it should come out perfectly solid and not break off. You could use it as a club if you want. Now the barrel has some additional sections that we're gonna to need to add. What I'm personally doing for this is I'm cutting some EVA foam strips, I'm cutting the textured side off using a depth line of three quarters, and I'm actually just gonna wrap them around the barrel. Of course, you wanna cut these lengths to the exact length that needs to wrap around the barrel. You can simply do that by course pre-cutting it and then measuring it around and then cutting it off where it's needed so that when you do go with the glue it does end up coming perfectly. Now you see there are seams but I've put them on the bottom side so I can actually cover them later. Uh, hiding them underneath is obviously a good way to do it. It's not the most ideal way of having seams but if you have to get around it hide it somewhere where no one's going to look. Now of course we need to add in the top little section. Now I'm going to use the wooden dowel again. I've obviously cut it to a smaller diameter, a smaller length, but I'm going to do the same process of cutting in an inch into the foam and then of course filling that hole with hot glue and then putting in the wood there and it should sit all nice and tidy. Now to finish up the little design piece here we want to add a nice piece of foam that sits in between it to obviously fill the gap so it's not just hovering there and looking all odd. Now the iron sights are actually pretty easy to make. What we're going to do is grab the template, throw it onto foam, we're going to make a left and a right and then a middle joining section. This joining section sits, of course, at the same thickness as the uh, side panels and then an inch deep. So, not too difficult. Then what we're going to do is grab a depth line, chuck it in halfway through each of those pieces of foam, cut the textured sides off, and then we have three pieces that are nice and thin, which we can go ahead and glue straight onto the end, and it should be in a nice little incline like a triangle. Next, we've got the back iron sights, which are even easier. We're gonna go ahead and cut out these two pieces of foam. We're gonna add a depth line halfway through the thickness, just like we did before. Go ahead, slice those in half, and then easily enough, you should just slide it on with some hot glue to the back there. Of course, making sure you are having the uh, kind of pointy sides outwards to create the nice effect that it has. But it's looking absolutely fantastic and exactly like what we're trying to achieve. There are a few more steps we are gonna, of course, go through, which is now the heat process. Obviously, we went and did all those kind of scoring techniques, which now when we grab the heat gun, we're gonna go through and give it a nice even coating, not burning the material, but just kind of moving down the gun, targeting those key points which we did throw the uh, scoring technique onto, and you can see it comes out amazingly. Not only is it gonna round off a lot of those uh, beveled edges we did, it's gonna make the foam a bit more tight and dense, so therefore it looks and feels a bit better, and all those scored lines are really gonna pop to give us the nice detail we obviously wanted to achieve. Now that the heating is out of the way, we can start to add in some little plastic pieces of detail. I personally use googly eyes, and so do many other cosplayers. It's a really cool little trick or cheat, so to speak, to get detail. I'm gonna mark out the points where I'm wanting to apply these. I'm only gonna do maybe about six on each side. You can copy exactly where I'm placing them if you want, or you do your own. And then you're just gonna simply put a dab of glue, hold it down so it doesn't pop back up, wait for it to cure, and then you should be good. Of course, they look really odd and strange now, and they will until they get painted. And once you do some weathering effects or some dry brushing on them, they will look fantastic and no one will ever tell they are googly eyes unless you hand them the prop and it starts shaking around and you ask her, what the hell is this? 
Now we can see all the individual layers here on the foam. It's not a nice look. No one wants this obviously to be there for the final paint. So what we're gonna do is use a technique I always use on EVA foam based props and that's use art clay. Now art clay is a very uh, easy to find, child friendly, non-toxic form of sealant. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna go ahead and mix it together so it's nice and durable and malleable into nice like spaghetti lines. Using some water as like a uh, base to allow the uh, clay to stick. It's kind of like a, a two way. You can use the clay and the water to help push it aside and form it into a nice paste. The idea is to get the clay into the seam and then cover it with a nice thick layer. You don't want to apply too much that it becomes this giant gooey bubbly thing. You want it to kind of keep it even and nice and flat across all surfaces, which you're gonna do across the whole gun. Once it is hardened, you can literally tap it with your nail and hear the tapping like plastic. You can go ahead and sand it. Take the sandpaper and go to town on it, make it level, make it flat, get rid of any imperfections, and it should be a nice, perfect surface. Then we're gonna jump into actually sealing this thing. Now to seal it, I personally use wood glue. You can use uh, plastic dip, whatever you prefer. Wood glue for me is perfect for EVA foam props, which I know aren't gonna bend, they're not gonna flex, so therefore I don't have to worry about cracking, because this will give it a nice uh, hard coating, so to speak, depending on how many layers you use. All you wanna do is grab a nice big brush and just go to town on it. Be careful when applying it to the um, sections that we've, of course, used to score, we don't want to fill that section up, so just apply it lightly there, but everything else, just go to town on it and make it nice and fill. What you want to do is leave it for about 12 hours, that should be completely cured, and then we can go ahead and apply our priming coats. I personally use gray acrylic paints as a nice undercoat, because it allows you to go dark and light, no matter what your top coat colors are. In this instance, of course, it's a nice yellow tan, that really doesn't um, impede it. You don't need too many coats. I think I applied two coats of the yellow until I finally got the nice primary color I was looking for. And then of course, all the other grays and blacks can come out nicely without too much trouble. Now the techniques I used on this is simply dry brushing, uh, black wash, and of course, just different shades of grays, silvers, and blacks to get those nice tonal effects. Nothing too fancy and it's very easy to do yourself. I'm not gonna provide a tutorial on that. There's amazing tutorials already out there. So you guys can just do a bit of research if you want to take it to the next level. So that's it. Part two done and dusted. I hopefully you guys managed to follow along and it wasn't too difficult for you. This is one of the easiest guns I've ever had to produce out of any of the types of foam. Thankfully because it is a very cartoony style. So the detail isn't so intricate in its final design. So if you are happy with the result, that's awesome. If you're not, maybe do it again. It's a very cheap build like you've already seen and it doesn't require too much time. But the key thing is in getting better is just practice, practice, practice. This applies to any field. So this one, of course, is no exception. All you need to do is just continuously build. I've built maybe 15 props out of EVA foam and 500 plus out of styrofoam. So for me, I've had a lot of practice. So if you don't meet my exact replication on the first try, then don't be too hard on yourself. I've just had a bit more practice than you guys are, but you guys are gonna get pretty damn close. So that's it, of course. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and like the video and subscribe, of course. And of course, if you finish it and you wanna share it, you can do that on my Instagram using Andy underscore DFT. I'd love to see all the work you guys produce. Otherwise, until the next one, thank you for watching and catch you later.